All right, welcome adventurers to D&D Amongst the Giants session 26, The Moral Dilemma. Everybody ready to get started? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. Right. So, last session started with an investigation down by the river. Uh, with the Zentarum defeated and the self-named Bronze Avenger sifting through the stuff within their cargo wagon, the party took a bit of a closer look at the cocoons that lied on the riverside. The investigation led to combat, with waterlogged, bloated corpses crawling from within, uh, each resembling members of Bear Team 6 uh, and the two noble children that were locked away in the chambers of the Avalid Slayer. Uh, as the last zombie fell, however, uh, the party's attention was turned to Felgolos once again, who had begun fumbling around in the cart, breaking many of the items within and even knocking the cart over as he turned around, not paying much attention to what was going on around him. Uh, the party would agree uh, to help Felgolos uh, and try to get his most prized possession back. A pouch of uh, Yandala's Delight, uh, which was a gift from Yandala herself to Felgolos's father. Um, his claim was that the item was taken from his horde by two blue dragons, uh, far more powerful than he is, and taken back to their lair, somewhere near the village of Ascor. The party went their separate ways uh, from Felgolos and continued, as Felgolos continued to head towards a score, they instead turned and went towards One Stone. It was here that they would immediately land at the center of the spirit mound, disrupting the guardians that lied beneath, uh, both of them riding belay. Um, it wasn't long before the party was victorious and... Uh, began trying to find the artifact that was somewhere within this mound. As they began to look around, Perith did as well, heading to the south where she found a couple of totems that were standing on the spirit mound, uh, very obvious warnings to those that would intrude on this sacred land uh, that they are not welcomed here. Shortly after, their attention was pulled away as a tribe of people who worship at this mound came to defend from their village, only to be slaughtered before most of them could even raise a weapon. Calidus was instructed to make his way aboard the airship as the party finished off the last tribal by casting a whole person spell and tying him up. As they began to interrogate, asking how or what to do with the item that they believed was the artifact, the tribal answered honestly, though had no information, just that it was an item for them to worship. After a few moments, it finally dawned on Evandur that perhaps there was something he could do, and as he began to look around, realized he could cast a spell or get at least a spell scroll that might be able to assist him. Uh, pulling the spell scroll off of his coat that he was wearing or cloak that he was wearing, he was able to get an identify spell scroll. And with this spell scroll, he looked at the stone that was lodged into this uh, griffin's head. Uh, or, no, it wasn't a griffin. It was the uh, Pegasus. Pegasus. Uh, into the Pegasus head as the eye, uh, he began to identify that it was a transmutation spell uh, and being able to basically put his hand onto the stone, he could command it to shrink down into a much more manageable size. As he picked up the stone and began to head over towards the ladder, uh, it was here that we had a bit of a moral dilemma as Alakul attempted to figure out the best battle strategy for the party, turning to Hopper and demanding that the final trial be executed, who was unable to perform any actions whatsoever. Hopper obliged 
and the rest of the party began to head towards the uh, airship and board it as Kalidus was already up there. Uh, and that is where we actually start tonight's session. So you guys will move you to the airship. Uh, you guys were able to gather this uh, the the stone that was used uh, as their uh, kind of ritual. Uh, uh, they they kind of just used it as a, a place to kind of pray and it was almost meditation yet they had no idea what where it generated from what other than giants had given them this gift um, Evandor casting the spell taking it into his hand you're able to easily make your way aboard the ship uh, probably be able to put this thing in your pocket if you want it or your backpack it's only six inches in size now uh, everybody is now up and aboard the airship. Uh, what would you like to do? Sleep. Well, I, for one, had a blast on this field trip. Good for you. Good for all of us. You finally figured out how to get the artifact going. I'm down with uh, Alex Jules idea. I'm going into a room and shutting the door behind me. Okay. Uh, so you head downstairs, the crew kind of looking around, uh, Delsephine uh, looking over, uh, mostly Achaelidus, who's standing uh, directly beside him, or beside her, and says, okay, well, uh, I assume it was a, a success. Where are we headed to? Uh, Kalidus is just kind of leaning against the rail. Um, you see uh, Zox, his raven, has returned his perch on his shoulder. Um, just standing here with his arms crossed, and Kalidus just shrugs. Um, I think someone else should make the decision. He could go help the Bronze Avenger. Delsephine kind of looks looks over at Kalidus, who seems to be not very responsive, and looks over towards Evandor and Hopper and Parrot. And you guys, where are we going? Forge, can we have the map? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, can we have the map? <laughs> I would love to say, I would love to set a heading. Uh, so just a reminder of uh, the path that you guys have taken thus far. Uh, you started from uh, the eye of the all father went to the great worm. Uh, I thought you stopped at one other. No, you went straight here. Uh, there was a there Bronze was a Avenger stop was at the, the river. Yes, it was a stop at the river, and then made your way over. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but then you were trying to decide where to go next. You could head north to Boron as well, uh, south to Saint, uh, Stone Stand, uh, south to uh, Everlund, or head east over to a score. We could head. A score. A score was where we could head there, up to the well, and then and then hit a score. score. What was in a What was in a score again? Is that where we're going Brock to find Vendor. the two bro? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. where the two blue dragons are because yep. that's the yeah. desert there. That's where yeah, we're we can up. hit. We can hit the. We can hit the well and then go straight on to a score, because that way we can knock out a priority and then hit that side quest. Okay, uh, so let's do some quick math. Then we could double back. Then we could double back south later. Okay. Uh, doing some math here on this chart. Uh, from one stone going to Boron as well. Uh, it's only 
60 miles uh, at, what was the pace, eight, eight miles an hour? Yes. Uh, and I'm terrible at math, so I'm getting my calculator. Uh, so it take most of the day. Currently, uh, you guys had left first thing in the morning, uh, made your way to one zone. You could, uh, no, oh no, you traveled at nightfall and you got there and waited before you went down to one zone, correct? I think so. That sounds yeah. right. Uh, so your early morning, you could travel there. It'll start getting uh, probably afternoon ish. Uh, you're looking at uh, probably three bells uh, in the evening or afternoon. Uh, by the time you reach Bow Run as well, if that is a path you would like to go. Is it enough to get a long rest? I mean, you could hesitate and fly there and hover for a half hour. It's a seven and a half hour journey. So you would get a long rest as long as you don't do much of anything for that last half hour. But uh, yeah, I think we need to. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, you begin heading up uh, making your way over towards Bull Run as well uh, anything you guys would like to do during this time I'm going to do Arcane Recovery okay. uh, anybody else I'm just resting yeah, I don't have anything to do. Just rest. Yep, resting, talking with Knox. Okay. Yep, probably just resting. As everybody is settling in and resting a bit, um, Kalidus, the voice has returned. <sighs> in the back of your head, you hear... Listen to my words, Kalidus of the Mephistopheles. Your path ahead will be dark, and your mind shall remain in constant turmoil. You shall face the internal struggle between sparing a life and taking it. It is the choice that will always be the most difficult for you to overcome. I sense you faced such a choice before, yes? Just kind of a mental nod of assent. Tell me of it. I've protected those around me, those that I called friends, but at the cost of others' lives. It seemed like the right thing to do at the time, though I was punished for doing so. The voice pauses for a few moments and says, And how did you protect those around you? Kind of have a mental image of fire kind of surrounding me and thinking about that. I use my magic. Something I thought was for helping people, but I learned that day that it can hurt as well. few moments pass again uh, and had this divinity of yours not interjected do you feel that your choices might have been different no but you saved your friend who was dying and the man that accosted you why did he do so? Thinking... I don't know. Never had a chance to ask him.
but you were abandoned because of the choice that you made. I was cast out from the only home that I ever knew. Yes, I was abandoned. I've learned because of that. Give me a wisdom save. A few moments pass and you feel as if it's reaching through your memories. Uh, trying to find information, trying to understand more of what happened. After a few moments, the voice comes back and says, You weren't able to save the priest. The medicine was destroyed, wasn't it? I'm like looking at my backstory because like, was it? <laughs> um, that with a frown and nod. Yes, unfortunately with my outburst it was lost as well. But the choice remains the same. If I can protect the life that is in front of me, yes, I will continue to do so. However, sometimes these choices are going to be made for you, not with your permission. At a time when you cannot be a voice of reason for those around you. Your companions are drifting further from the light. I hope you understand this. I have seen it. I hope I can stop it, but... I'm just me. I don't know if I have... the power to do so. A few moments pass and kind of sit here in the cabin... waiting. No response. She says nothing else. The rest of you, taking your long rest, doing what you would like to do, anything you would like to handle before we head into the run as well. So we get the effects of a long rest? I don't know. What are you trying to do first? Anything? I'm good. Then yes. I'm good. Then yes. Hang out. Hang out. Is that what you said, Zone? Yeah, just hang out until I'm healed. All right. Uh, eight hours will pass. You'll make your way to Bo Run as well uh, and hover over top of it uh, and kind of glance down at this kind of new and foreign type environment something you've never quite seen before uh, let me pull up notes here as I want to make sure you're going to the right spot too yes okay um, as you make your way to bow run, bow run as well and the airship stops uh, at the command of Delsephine. Uh, she alerts everybody, letting you know that you have finally arrived. Uh, the spirit mound is rested in the heart of uh, Drawerwood. Drawer? Drawerwood? That's a very weird name. Drawerwood. Drawerwood. Uh, and is not so much a mound as it is an ice cold cavern. Uh, whose ceiling is partially open to the sky. 
the view from above as you're kind of hovering over top of it makes uh, kind of scoping out the environment below pretty easy. Uh, from where you stand uh, or from where you hover as you begin to uh, make your way down the ladder and peek into this cavern, um, as you're looking down, you notice it takes on a very unique shape, triangular, in fact, uh, which lies almost 250 feet below the surface that you stand on. And we'll go ahead and drop you to the map. And let me guess, nobody sees anything. You'd be correct. I don't see anything. Oh, I found us. Never mind. I, see, I, I see my token and about a quarter of the squares square next to me. Oh, and I, I see, see something. This up here. Yeah, you guys yeah. Have I have great vision. Dark vision. Yeah, can also see something happening up here where a fire is. What fire? Zoom out. One of you normal vision should probably do a light or something. Oh, I'll cast light. Uh, who, who are you casting light on? Quarter staff. On you? Oh. Mm, you. When you say that, that makes me think it's a bad idea. I'm. Put I just on. need to know so I can apply the vision. To yeah. It. Put it on and look cool. <laughs> so on you. There you go. As a reminder, every square is 10 feet in size, so you're not going to get Fuck. much help. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, the triangular cavern that resides below, and trust me, if you could see far enough, you could see that it was triangular in shape. Uh, lying 250 feet below contains, among other things, a heated pool with a steady geyser. Uh, this pool... Uh, came to be known as Boron as well. A uh, very small stra uh, stand of pine trees called the Sunken Grove is what resides in the center of the area here. Um, and way off into the northeastern corner, as many of you have seen, uh, a campfire uh, with three crude tents uh, and the silhouettes of a handful of individuals crowded around it. Uh, the Youth Guard make uh, this place their home and have for quite a long time. Uh, to get down and to ascend below, a rope tied at the feet of where Hopper stands uh, descends down into the well itself, uh, allowing easy passage for anybody to climb uh, in and out of the well. What would you like to do? So I'm just gonna want. go. So we don't, we keep finding these tribesmen, and we don't seem to have the best track record with them. You They've usually write, ended up dead. Did you write down your identify spell? No, I was told to use it. Worst wizard ever. <laughs> well, I suppose. If the methods or what people are feeling are flawed, we should try talking to them first. I think that would be a better approach. These people have lived in these places as far as we know for some time. We're intruders. Great. So I imagine you're taking the lead. That's what I must do to stop you from senselessly killing. Yes. Oh, all right. not, there's no Hold senseless on. in it at all. I knew you had you had something to say. The first place we went, nobody attacked us, so we didn't fight anybody. The second place we went, they started charging us with their crazy, but admittedly very cool, mounts. And then they came at us with an entire, like, army. It's true. Mm -hmm. You were there. She has a point. Look around at the group. Say, I have not spoken out. I have not 
But you clearly have something you want to say. I believe our methods have been flawed. We're well. strong. You all make it very obvious that you're strong quite often. Those people, those tribe members, were not strong. Not as strong as us. They certainly made an effort to try and show that they thought they were strong. Were you scared, Hopper, for your life? Not at all. I for was it. very scared for my life. Evendor, however, was scared, and Evendor pays me to make sure that he is not so afraid. So I killed those that wanted to kill him. Evendor was behind a rock. Out of sight, out of mind for all the tribe, tribal people. They threw lightning at him, and two others, if I recall. Uh, they were more than capable of doing harm to all of us, including yourself. And they came at us with the intent to do harm. I don't feel bad about killing people. It's my job to kill people. In fact, I come from a realm where... I need to make sure that I live in the most extreme manners or my soul evaporates. And being here is a little bit of a flip to that. But I still kind of feel things in a more extreme manner than everyone else. So giving the like chain talk for killing tribals that came at us with weapons drawn doesn't sink in. But I understand that it's heavy on you. I do have empathy. I don't have empathy for people who wish to do us harm. They threw their lives away. Death is just death. It's natural. It's going to occur to them some of the time. Indeed. They just chose to face it sooner. Me. I'm death. That Caledus will just shrug and say very well. Again, I'm open to somebody who's much more diplomatic of trying a different approach. But the moment they come at us with hostilities, I'm going to do what I'm paid to do. Actions do speak louder than words sometimes. Yep, you are completely correct. So let's try a different approach if the approach we've used is not to your liking. And I highly encourage it and wish it the best. Kind of nod to the rope and say, well, shall we then? Be my guest. Hopper will go down first just to secure the area. It's her job. Okay. Um, what order are you guys going to go down it's a 250 foot drop so oh fuck bring us in closer <laughs> so you may hit it with our solar uh, I don't want to fall 250 feet I could do something really cool and just waste that racial ability just fall 220 feet and then just bamp the 30 so we have hopper that's down first who is next? I'll go next. Okay. Next. I'll follow him up. Okay. Next. I'll do. Okay. I'll go last. All right. So, Alakul and Perrin. All right. Uh, so, you are actually on the ground level. That little dotted line that you guys see is where you guys were standing on the edge, kind of looking over and down into the well itself. Uh, standing here, uh, taking a look around, uh, you see it's pretty damn dark. It's hard to see much of anything. Uh, you see the uh, quote-unquote sunken grove in the center uh, that has a handful of trees. Uh, you can hear the rushing water and feel the warmth of the spring off to... Uh, the northwest uh, and off to the northeast you can see the campfire lit uh, as we get down to the bottom not being able to see um, I'll cast light on hopper on do you have a shield right or just a glaive just a glaive uh, yeah. put it on the head of the glaive 
Just to give us okay. a little bit more light down here. Uh, okay. Uh, but as far as like movement or any other light sources, that's... the only thing we see is just the campfire. Yes, and that's gonna futz with uh, Hopper's vision because I can only do one or the other. So night. Yeah, that's or fine. The light. That just I put the yeah, light just on. hop me over. It'll yep. be it'll be easier for him. All right, so we are aware of the campfire that now I can see zooming all the way out. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's head that way then. Okay. And these are these are ten foot squares. Yes. Okay. I'm just gonna move at a normal pace, so only thirty feet, guys. And I guess once they catch up, just let me know if I see anything. Everybody still able to see us? Everybody uh, but Parrot. Yeah, Parrot stepped away. Yep. Just assume she's okay. glaring behind Alakul. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, you're noticing it's quiet. Like, even where the campfire is, you would think sounds would echo really well through here there's not much activity everybody's pretty quiet it's almost like they're kind of settling in for the evening uh, not making too much noise or anything of that nature like how much echoes are footsteps giving off not a lot because directly above you is the opening uh, that leads you back out so where it would normally reverberate and go up uh, it kind of goes up into the nothingness of the sky. Are these uh, tracks here that I'm seeing? No, that's the outline of the opening directly above. Okay. So if you were like looking straight up, the top of the cavern ends where that the dotted gotcha. line is. As we're getting closer, have I noticed any of them stirring? Any of them seem to notice us coming? Uh, you know, large amounts of light. Check. I'm just going to look around for being on alert, too. Glad my roles didn't change in my absence. <laughs> uh, Hoppers, you're leading the group. You're noticing uh, the, the individuals huddled around the campfire that you can see don't appear to be stirring, and they're not really paying any mind to you. And they're definitely alive. They're not like decoy dummies or all dead and just sitting at the fire. Oh, oh yeah. As you're as zombies. from from where or you're zombies. from where you're standing as you're looking over in that direction, uh, kind of up on a podium here, uh, a platform. As you're looking over at the campfire, you can see the silhouettes of these people, and they're all moving around and like they're having conversation and things of that nature. Okay. Um, well. What language do these people speak uh, last session? Uh, nobody tried to speak to them last session. Uh, uh, well, actually, I tried. made them speak common. The okay, last yeah, that was a, I remember it being a thing. I can't remember the details, yep. though. It was common last session. Because I was originally going to do under common. But then, yeah, no, it was common. Gotcha. It was under common for the mage. Because he knew Undercommon. Or the Shaman, I should say. It's probably best to declare ourselves at this far before we head in. I'll kind of nod to Hopper and move forward. And just kind of raise my voice so... Hopefully it maybe carries or echoes through this cavern that we're walking into. Um, say... Um, people of uh, Biran as well... Uh, We've come to visit in seeking something. Uh, we mean you no harm. Um, as you do, everybody give me a perception check. Still shitty. I throw a fireball. Like, yep. I don't actually. Right off the bat, there we go. 
Who's the chaotic evil one? Me. <laughs> I'm getting severely <laughs> outdone. Um, no, I know. I'm joking. <laughs> Hopper, you hear movement. Uh, north, north, east, and more east of you. So north, northeast, and a little more east. So probably like right over here. Hold so on, like on north, n- north, northeast is yeah, up in that direction. East is almost straight east. Yeah. So not just that camp, but in the other directions too. Correct. Uh, it's not just us. They're not just them guys. Uh, once again, I'll call out, just holding my hands up. You know, placatingly. Uh, we mean you no harm, we just want to speak with you. Um, a few moments pass, and all of you then start to hear the footsteps around you, uh, getting closer. Uh, it seems like a small number, but still coming. Why am I still here? I should not be here. You're, You're here surrounded for by allies. It'll be fine. Also that. Probably should scoot in. After a few more moments, uh, you watch as two of the tribals immediately dash forward, uh, spears drawn looking in your direction. Uh, specifically at Kalidus, who's standing there with his hands up in the air. Moving forward, you know, aggressively, but not attacking me? Correct. Almost like a guarded position. Okay. Um, with that, I'll kind of glance back at everybody, making sure everybody's keeping their cool, and then I'll turn back towards the two uh, men? Yes. Yes, both okay. the mermen. Uh, with that, I'll look towards them, still holding my hands up, say, my name is Kalidus. We were sent here to reclaim a relic, an ancient item. We very much do not want to fight you. We just want to take this item and leave. Um, give me a... Give me a persuasion check. Uh, even despite their ability to understand your words, you are calming enough to them. Dis- and like, which is kind of weird for you, especially as a-, a tiefling. People don't typically look at tieflings and are just like, oh yeah, it's fine. It's just tiefling. No, it's a thing, usually. Uh, they seem very calm and almost inviting. Uh, they start to lower their spear a little bit, uh, dropping the point, uh, leaning it away from you and the rest of the party. Uh, the one to the north uh, kind of grunts and uh, kind of awkward, uh, very weird uh, motion, leaning over towards or pointing over towards where the campfire is uh, and motions for you guys to pass and to go that direction. And I'll <clears throat> lower my hands down to my side and kind of motion for the group and start walking that way. Um, trying to think. As you're walking by and begin to make your way over here, you see uh, a cliff ledge. Uh, about 20 feet in height. Uh, but as you're approaching, especially from the angle that you are, Kalidus, uh, you see there are several hand and footholds uh, along the uh, the side of the actual cliff, uh, making it so that you could climb up if you would like to. Okay. <clears throat> uh... I give him a boost. You said it's about 15 feet down. It's a climb up. So you're climbing. Oh, it's up. Yeah, it's a 20 foot climb up. Boosting you up. All right. I'm going to boost you you down. 
They do have like hand and foot holds to make it a little okay. easier, so it, you'll be able to climb up pretty easy. All right, so I'll climb up and what am I seeing here? Uh, as you get a bit closer, uh, your and as you start ascending up uh, this ledge up towards the tents, uh, you hear a whistle ring out uh, from the uh, two tribals back behind you. Uh, a couple moments pass and you begin to see what looks like a few barbarians just very strong looking barbarians huddled around a fire just keeping warm cooking meals and things of that nature um, but shuffling around from the backside, side uh, you begin to take notice that somebody else is also paying attention uh, she kind of peeks around um, the tent looking over top of the the barbarians that are sitting at the campfire and not the barbarians are not really paying any mind to you guys uh, instead just this woman uh, she begins to step around uh, attempting to make her way over a bit closer toward you uh, she turns and looks up at you you can tell she's probably considered or what you would think of as the leader of this group uh, carries a very large uh, or very long staff with her uh, she walks forward and looks at you and points the staff directly in your uh, in your direction uh, pointing it almost towards like your chest uh, and looks and says what is it you're here for uh, with that, I'll look at her and kind of nodding greeting. It says, we have been sent here for ancient relics. Things that were hidden in these burial mounds by people some time ago. Do you know anything of that sort? A um, few moments pass. Um, she looks around over at the others and looks back over at Kalidus and says we're Black Lion tribe uh, this our home many years uh, you seek an altar or a relic this beach is just Spectacular. Uh, yes, a, a relic of some kind, I believe, is what we're looking for. Uh, she looks at you uh, and says, You won't harm us or our altar. I'll shake my head. No, we have no interest in harming you. We would like to claim this item to help our friends out and depart. Uh, as everybody starts to climb up, uh, the woman begins to kind of take a step back. Uh, as more and more people join, uh, the barbarians begin to stir a little bit. Uh, standing up, taking, uh, reaching down towards their weapons and watching very closely. Not drawing them, but preparing. A uh, few moments, uh, she looks over at you and says, uh, You not, you not hurt our altar. You may search cavern, but we'll watch you. That I'll nod to her and then turn around to the rest of the group. Say, I think that's pretty clear. I think we can all agree to not harm an altar while we search for this relic. Can't really kill an altar. No one's atheist, right? Uh, as you say that uh, she nods uh, motioning to uh, one of the 
barbarians that are sitting over by the campfire. Uh, and speaking in a very awkward uh, tongue that uh, you would assume that they've just put together like their own kind of scrambled language uh, informs him to follow you. Uh, he doesn't really speak uh, to you guys as he approaches, steps up very calm, very quiet, uh, his hand off of his weapon, not appearing aggressive in any manner. Uh, and the woman to the south looks and points over in his direction and says, he'll make sure you don't disturb Alter. If you do, there will, there will be vengeance. We will come for you. That I'll nod and say if I see no reason we would harm your altar, but we will make sure that we take steps to keep it safe and from us especially. Where is this? Do you have any idea where this artifact, where this relic may be? Uh, she looks at you, shakes her head. No. No, no artifact. Just our altar. Hmm. Well, shall we start exploring then? Well, he knows where we're going, right? Are you expecting him to lead? Well... So, they're talking about an altar, right? Yes, like a ceremonial kind of altar, yes. I mean, I would figure that that would be a good place to start looking. Also, I'm putting ten gold on the, on the altar being the relic. Probably. Man, what was your first guess? <laughs> the fact that they don't want us to disturb the altar. I mean, we don't have to get all of them, right? Now, I, this we was your to. choice. I mean, yeah, you like guys we're going were after this. this. Yeah, we want to do all the extra fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, so worst case scenario for Kalidus's well-being, we just don't take this one if it turns out to be the altar, or we just kill everybody again. You mean like everybody how it's been for the other two? Everybody gets We one. didn't kill anybody the first time we stopped. No, but that's only because we killed their tyrannical leader. Yeah. See, violence scared. does solve problems. Uh, yeah, we just saved a tribe, and then we doomed another one. And, well, the first tribe that we saved, we also stole their ceremonial song, I guess you could say. They were violent. Stole, is a, stole <laughs> is a harsh word. We acquired it for educational purposes. And you don't know if they were fine with it. They were just terrified of you, Avendor. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which means it's fine. Intimidation always has its place as well. That's what I'm saying, Caleb. Is see, you're finally speaking uh, something I understand. You don't Evan have to kill to intimidate. Evendor. Now you completely lost me again. It makes it could just easier. break fingers, Parent. Evandor, give me a history check. I was almost worried. Anytime you say give me a, I'm always worried. <laughs> As you do. 28. Okay. That's 27. fantastic. Um, in your studies of the North, uh, and you've had a few decent... Uh, exposures to some of the various uh, Uthgar barbarians that roam across the north here. Uh, the story of the Black Lion actually does ring a bell to you. Uh, according to the legend, uh, Vorana was a hero of the Uthgar tribe uh, who died fighting a demon uh, in the woods that remain in the sunken grove here or uh, in the, the area above, I mean. Um, 
However, in the final moments of the battle, uh, the ground collapsed beneath their feet and it crumbled the, the fight plunged down into this cavern itself. Uh, barbarians began exploring this cavern, the Black Lion specifically, uh, for the first time when they came down, they actually thought they had found the bones of Borana and then immediately took them and built an altar upon these bones. Uh, with everything kind of uh, just attempting to appease who they were now viewing as almost a god. Um, you have a feeling that this altar is more of like a burial altar, something that had a very ceremonious uh, uh, background to it uh, with this specific tribe, which is why they're very protective of the altar itself. Interesting. Why do I get so the basically poking with the grave? <laughs> That's what I got. Also, why do I get the feeling that those bones are not what they actually think they are? Because barbarians are stupid. I mean, bar barbarians are kind of stupid. You're absolutely right. The those guys had emotions. Gotta get them out of the same. genetic pool. It would be better for the whole world, really. Parath literally just suggested genocide of barbarians. I, I just wanted to. Throw I that mean, out there. because they have a minus one intelligence, which she also has. I don't. I don't know how many more times I have to point to favorite enemies, humans. Parath, how come you're so evil? She doesn't like people. I know she this. Been, like I know it's been your worse. character since you made her, but why are you so evil? <laughs> this is shocking. I'm going to start moving around and exploring, uh, looking around for either this altar okay. or for anything else while they're just going back and forth. What a twist. I can't see. Sh this map is so huge. <laughs> Why would you go down there? Which way? <laughs> Which way did you go? Uh, yeah, I imagine it'd be up, right? Cause... He's gone. Uh, there's nothing gone. in this area. In game or out of game. <laughs> I just walked around it a minute ago, and there's nothing there. I went down back down the, the steps. Well, there's... And... Oh, hey. Why don't we? Why don't we just ask somebody? Almost like the guide that we have. <laughs> also, I feel I feel like we should start by going to observe the altar first. Hello, can you tell us where the altar is? Uh, you're talking to the the barbarian. This with yes. You. Uh, he stops and looks at you, um, and just continues walking south. Alter. She's probably taking us there. <laughs> out of games, it went. Out of game, it went okay. Um, going to make for some interesting characters uh, and character changes. Don't think it's going to affect Hopper, but it is going to affect uh, Al Cool, which is pretty awesome. Uh, in game, nothing has happened yet. Well, little has happened. Uh, Hopper pretty much just explained. So glad we get to see trace marks of where they went to, otherwise I would that, be completely uh, lost. She pretty yeah. much doesn't care if it means killing an entire tribe as long would as she gets what Would it kill us to go wants. someplace so that's well lit for one of these? She was pretty much just okay with probably. I mean, the fact that it's evening or participating probably or killing. Either. So why don't we keep doing this at night? Because um, we're not intelligent. I, mean, I take offense. I'm just not brave enough to stop you. Uh, you begin to uh, make your way south, passing a handful of stalagmites, and you see a very worn path uh, that leads straight south. Uh, and you watch as uh, the barbarian begins to walk up to uh, yet another cliff and climbs up it. Same thing as before, uh, having some very easy to grab onto handholds, uh, making kind of reaching the, the peak of this or pla uh, plateau of this uh, fairly easy to do. Uh, as they continue on, uh, again leading you up here, 
uh, you begin to make your way over towards the top plateau of uh, the well here. Um, resting atop uh, the precipice to the south is a very large and somewhat very simplistic blood splattered stone block altar. Uh, as you get a bit closer, uh, passing by the two totems that stand on either side of this, uh, this uh, precipice here, uh, and you reach down to where the altar is, you take a closer look at it. Uh, it stands roughly nine feet long, uh, probably about six feet wide or so, uh, and stands pretty hefty size off the ground, about four foot in height. Uh, as you take a look around, uh, you're noticing there's not a lot other than the blood that's splattered all over it. Um, Evendur, as you're looking, you take a look around with uh, Detect Magic as you get a bit closer to this altar. Uh, the Barbarian kind of watching very closely as to what you're doing. You see something on the very, very faint edge of your 30 foot reach down below ground. Somebody leveled up. Hey, good for you, whoever that was. <laughs> I opened up a Facebook Messenger message and it was like, oh, hey, by the way, it's going to start your app now. I'm like, wait, no, <laughs> stop it. Ding. Hey, just the banner again. Just want to let you guys know I'm still watching. <laughs> Don't be evil. Thanks. I can see something underground. Mm-hmm. But it's hmm. on like the very faint edge. Like you can see the glow of something off in the distance. Uh, but it's so like such a minuscule amount because it's just it appears like it's probably further down than what you're seeing right now. I turn to the barbarian. What is underneath us? The barbarian shrugs. Something this is why I don't been... like working with these people. Okay. Ah, diplomatic is There's ever. something magical underneath us. Kind of like look down at my feet and lift them up, like right here? Oh, 30 feet under. Where you're seeing it, it's like right in this direction, but underground, uh, uh, several, several, several feet. You, you mean like right under the altar? On, on the front edge of it. Front edge of the altar. Of course it is. Of course. It's almost like he wants us to mess with the altar. We promised we would not do so. Hmm. So how big does the object seem to be? As you step closer and get get almost a straight over the top look, uh, straight down, the magic is so faint that you can't tell if it's close or far away. It's just the slightest glimmer of magic off of it. Hmm. But it makes it, was... it, it makes it very hard to detect if it's because you're so used to this spell. If anything within thirty feet, you can see the item, and then you see like an aura around it. This is just so dim that it's like just barely even there. It's just a speck on your radar. There was uh... mention of a cavern. Uh, we were in the cavern. Oh, yeah, we were in, in the, the cavern. Okay, I didn't understand that. Yep. Yeah, this is like the... What was it, the first map or whatever? Where it's like... 
we walk into the cave. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well, Kale, uh, that's probably what we need. Hmm. Well, the altar is here. It's underneath. We may be able to dig around the altar without disturbing it. I think we would uh, ask to beforehand. That they, they'll be pissed off if we even start digging near the altar. Does it seem like this guy, he seems to understand us at least to a point. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to walk over uh, and basically tell him, uh, we think what we're seeing, or seeking rather, is down beneath your altar. Could we carefully try to excavate it? Uh, he looks at you and awkwardly kind of grunts, uh, no hurt altar. We won't be hurting the altar. We'd just be going underneath it. Where, well, I don't know that information, but you know they put the altar on top of the dude that they found, right? <laughs> shh, shh, don't say uh... anything on Earth. When he says I don't that, know I'm that. Gonna, like, that out of character. <laughs> move forward and like point to the you know this stone with blood on it and such, and just kind of confirm, this is the altar. You do not want us to hurt, yes. And he shakes his head, yes. Well, don't you? I mean, it spells it spells it right there, Kayla. This altar. I will elders <laughs> blast you into oblivion. Wow! Do it. I got. I got. Um, bad death. I'll kind of like point to the ground, you know, next to the altar, and kind of like set my hand there. Don't. I'm not gonna start digging or anything. Be kind of like patting it there. We need to go down here. Can we? He repeats once again. No hurt altar. It won't be hurting the altar. You have Paris' word on that. No, oh, no one trusts Paris' word. You're right, Alakul's word. Mm hmm? Sorry about uh, that, I'm back. Remind that, me I'll... again why I'm well, with I'm all of you. Don't know. Because you like uh, treasure. I'm gonna try it. Everybody give me a perception check. Oh, great. We all know how good we are at those. Can't perceive anything. I'll have you know, I've been rolling great on those all day, and this will be <laughs> when I fail it. And then everybody, ah! everybody realizes Boom. blood blood on the altar probably means that this tribe sacrifices things. And hey, are there's you a saying bunch of these in. people are evil? And then these bunch of hapless idiots just go right up to their sacrificial altar. Evendor. Off to the north, you hear the sound of very large flapping wings. I just reach around, just be start tapping on the person close to me, which I guess is Perth, and just start pointing out that direction. I'm going to break your There's hand if coming. you keep tapping me. Not if that thing breaks us first. I'm going to grab his hand and break one of his fingers. I... Break Paris. <laughs> <laughs> and now Paris is dead. <laughs> That's fine. I'm... Nobody likes her anyway, apparently. I'm not hearing I'm either one of you. Jesus. Evander, what are you hearing? I'm gonna make a chaotic Something big business. with wings. Whatever. Hear wings? Is it a dragon friend? I doubt it. Oh, well. All right, I guess we need to deal with that problem. And by deal with, I mean murder. How close did it sound, Evander? Or how close did it sound? It's hard to tell. It sounded, especially where you guys are at, it was kind of echoing a little bit 
off of the walls, uh, but you could tell based on the reverberation that it was coming from straight behind you. Uh, but as you glance back and you look where the opening, like the opening of uh, the cavern itself and the sun's kind of shining down through it, you see nothing around that area where the sun or the evening light is still shining down in. Someone should ask our friend here if anything with wings lives in the cave. You there, does anything with big wings live here? And he starts doing the flapping motion. He nods. Red tiger. Red tiger. Tigers don't fly. They don't fucking fly, oh my god. Is Red Tiger a friend? He looks at you. Kind of uh, goes to shake his head no, and then goes to shake his head yes. Ah, well, that clarified things. It's probably a love snack relationship. <sighs> Good one. Thank Good you. One. I'll be here all week. Tip your waitress. <laughs> I tip Kalidus over. Wow. Uh, do we all hear wings now, or was it just Evander and like they're gone now? It's just Evander. Well, let's get busy digging or get busy leaving. I don't know. It kind of seems like those are something. the options right now. Or getting eaten by a tiger with wings that's red. Is Icarus back? I don't know. Icarus, you back? Nope. When did he leave? Zorn. It says Zorn was at his door. No, that was a while oh. ago. Sorry, I was just walking away to get a drink. What's up? How fast are you? I'm pretty fast. Evander thinks he hears something off to the north of us. You're very fast. You should be able to dodge it if it's something... evil? Un untoward? Everywhere we go, there are evil things. What would make this even, even different? It's true. Sometimes evil travels with us, and she looks to Para. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn around and say, if you don't mind, run as fast as you can to the north end of the cavern and back and see if you see anything. And as I'm saying that, I'll uh, place my hand on his chest and cast Daylight. Good. That'll ensure that whatever's whatever's I feel like bait down now. on him. <laughs> you were one thousand. Literally bait. became bait. <laughs> <laughs> literally just became bait. We dub the dragon bait. All right, well, I'm gonna take off running. I'm gonna dragon get a couple of arrows running. ready. I take off running, but that doesn't mean I'm coming back. He's got sixty sixty now, so mm -hmm. oh, oh, look at that illumination. We're gonna see this fucking light ball just running down the hall of the cave. Every single person winces and covers their eyes like someone walking into a dark room it's, that someone just flicks the light on. It's just that SpongeBob um, meme. Do I see anything eyes. yet? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm not. I gotta look at the thing. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Do you? God, no? you're supposed to know these things. Do I hear anything yet? No, you're running, so your footsteps are louder than the flapping that Evandor heard. I'm, I'm a monk. They're light footsteps. Light-ish. All right. I'm gonna climb the wall, or is this one a down wall? I think it's, it's yeah, down. it's the same thing. It's a down. So okay. You guys went up to get to the the precipice here. Uh, rest of you, what are you doing? Eat. Watching. Honestly, I'm, I'm gonna fall him. Blast prepared if there's anything within rank. Right. God, I'm, this is so fucking big. I'm gonna follow him because I know if I have to shoot something that I'm gonna need to see it. So I'm gonna just Eldred keep a spear. protective position around Devander. I'm pretty sure Alakul <laughs> can protect Kalidus from the crazy tribal we're leaving at our backs. I will. I will stay with Kalidus. Realizing that any kind of ranged fight is uh, not good for me. 
You know, Carius, it occurs to me that we might be able to draw it out if we hobbled you in some way. Hobbled me? Yeah, I'm just going to start shooting at your feet. Nope. Nope. It'll be 45 <laughs> more feet. Uh, Carius, give me a perception check. You are starting to hear the sound of wings as well. But not one set of wings. Oh. I'm running back now. That's that's all the news they need. <laughs> no, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> back there. I'm not going over there. No. You find it? There, there's a bunch. It's not just something. It's It's a bunch of somethings. Did you let, see me, it? let me up, move. No, I didn't see it. <laughs> you didn't Keep know looking, what your job was. <laughs> nope. You can come with me. What do you think I was doing? Bit. A hundred feet back there? <laughs> I have a ranged All right. weapon. Alright, I'm, I'm going 45 feet further. He died the way he lived, running away. I'm just waiting for the scream. <laughs> Oh yes, there is also Yellow Tiger and Blue Tiger. We're not good at names. <laughs> and Pink Tiger. Fucking Looking at that map, tigers. I'm kind of uh, yeah, realizing we... those There's are skeletons, of... guys. <laughs> oh, I think these are trees. Yeah, why? Are there no, trees no. in this? This. That's the, this. the rope. This oh, that's the rope. This is the rope that you guys took down. Oh, this it's not a convenient. Tree. It's not a complete, conveniently placed skeleton. Okay. No. Um, I want to do another listen here. I'm gonna stop and listen for a second. Still hear the flapping, uh, and then after a few moments, you hear what sounds like pretty large footfalls, uh, as the flapping of one of the beasts stops. Huh. You do a great buddy. <laughs> so far. You should have heard stomping. Boy, Boy Evander, I hope so they don't get so far so away. It, from no. Yeah, you hear them. of like a, a large-ish kind of beast landing. Upper at that point, it's their problem. That's fair. They are getting kind of wise. He stopped. He oh. told him to run to the other end of the cavern. <laughs> Okay. He hasn't reached there yet. He's All right, there I'm, yet. I'm going forward, Paris. Please don't let me die. Uh -oh. Please don't Please let don't me die. die. You are asking, um, you are asking um, the wrong party oh. member for this. As you look up, uh, and you, I go see, for the rope. <laughs> you see a monstrosity. And not just one, but three of them in front of you. Uh, the one in the center landing on the ground, crawling around on what appears oh. to be the body of a tiger and the head of a very deformed man and very large wings. Uh, it looks in your direction and kind of snarls a bit and lets out a shout that almost sounds like an elephant call as it shouts in your direction. Um, do I recognize these? Uh, you give me... An, you know these as Manticore. And we're running. That's all they needed <laughs> to know. Hi, Paris. We, we, oh, got, we gotta go. Um, is he running back towards us faster? I, I think so. Also, what was that sound? Paris and Acarius. Give me another perception check. Oh, to, to to find out about the ones that just landed behind us? Uh, yeah, I don't see them. Uh, you again hear the other two that were flanking on the left and right of the one. Also letting out the same uh, elephant-like trumpet sound is now you hear fast footsteps on the ground. Very, very fast um, footsteps. Double time? We gotta go first. Let's go. As we're here, we'll have a few seconds before anything ha before they die. Um, 
turn around to the uh i assume we're all hearing this trumpeting sound yes okay uh, i want to turn around oh. to the barbarian and be like is that red tiger just referencing the sound yes not red gonna tiger. lie that is not what i pictured when i heard red tiger but yeah i can see it now ah so can i, I hope you're okay if they we the kill trumpeting them. noises what was that? Can I figure out what's making the trumpeting noise? Like, figure out what creature Jesus. it is? <laughs> uh, if you're doing it just on sound, because you won't be able to really see it. Well, now you could probably see it. I'll give you, yeah, I'll give you a nature check uh, on this to try to figure out what it is. 16? Uh, yeah, based on the trumpeting sound of the screams that these beasts are letting out uh, and the size of them as they're approaching, you got a pretty good idea that these are manticore. And do I know their thing about humans? Uh, I don't know. Do you know their thing about humans? I, as a player, no. Um... <laughs> uh... You know, I'm trying to decide how much you know about them. No, I, I'll say no because you've probably never seen them up close or devoted a ton of time into studying them. I've never seen anything up close. <laughs> correct. Would, would we know that, that they're evil? I mean, they're chasing Acarius and Parath, so. That's up for discussion. I mean, I can't have allies dying. Uh, oh, yeah. So, running away now. I think they may need help shortly. We should start moving towards them. I think so, too. You might be correct. Or we're uh, safe. Uh, are these trees, Forge? Yes, these they are. These big things? All right, so I'm going to get behind this tree. And then I'm going to pull the hood of my Cloak of Elven kind up, and I'm going to hide. Okay. And I'm going to keep running. So I have... <laughs> uh, cloak of Elven kind, what does that do? Uh, so I have advantage on self-checks to hide when I am staying still. So okay. hear me and out they here. Have, they have disadvantage for perception checks to find me. Okay. Uh, hear me out. Kalidus but... dispel daylight. So I was just going to say the following is happening is you're stealthing the manticore in the middle who has kind of locked his sights upon Acarius is going to lift up his tail and you watch as three tail spikes shoot out from it in the direction of Acarius. Uh, one, two, three. I don't think it's rolling public. It is not. It is uh, not. Okay. I'm going to fix that. So it does for the next one. Come on. What? All oh, crits. Whoa, that's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, how did that happen? Would you look at that? Okay. Uh, 22, 6, and 7. Well, that 22 is going to hit. All right. Uh, dealing 10 piercing as one of the spikes catches you in your shoulder. Uh, we are going to have everybody go ahead and roll for initiative, though. Done. Yes. Yes, you've already done it. Oh, what the shit? <laughs> you... Oof. Oh, I love cool. it, Ben. Come on. Hey, hey, that's not a nat one, even though it's red. Uh, it is. You just rolled twice and you took the nap one, apparently. What? No, you took the... No, when, yeah, when you take... Zero. When you roll initiative. Right, you roll take the initiative. Okay. Yeah. It's just it's telling us red. that you also had a monumental it's, failure. It bugs if you roll a failure on that roll. It always on shows initiative it red advantage. on initiative. Yeah. On initiative advantage, it always shows it red. The one I haven't seen is if you have a nat 20... And a one. Which color is it then? Oh yeah, I haven't seen. Yes, that it sure is. All right. So with that, <clears throat> Hopper. Uh, awesome. You, we're dead. You watch as Acarius takes this uh, spike into the back, 
kind of stumbles forward a little bit. Parath is attempting to hide from everything. What are you doing? What are you doing? Evander, you are lit up like a Christmas tree. I'm not going to lie. You probably don't want that up. Yep. <laughs> so oh, shit. Somebody needs to protect Kaelidus because Alakul is so far down on the initiative. Uh, 10, 20, wow. 30, a slide wow. down. Wow, it's not my fault. Yeah, I think... <laughs> I think that's about as far as I can get, so I'll just start moving down right there. I'll start moving towards a carry since they can see him. That's it. That was a double move. Okay. Sorry, just pulling everything up here. We are still counting these as 10, right? We're not doing the 15 close. Uh, it's a standard size when you're up close outside of 15 feet. It's the gotcha. size of Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, that was, that's a double move, so I'm yeah. done. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. This one. Let's see. He is <clears throat> going to look, uh, not seeing Parrot, and is going to uh, sniff around a little bit. Uh, let's see. Inside his wisdom. Well, shit. Don't think it helps me with scent. Uh, go ahead and give me a stealth check. Because, yeah, I don't think he's going to see you, but he can sense where you were at. He can smell you and smell the area uh, that you're at. Uh, begins to uh, slowly kind of move forward, almost a very, like, methodical kind of march around here as he comes a little bit closer, trying to track your scent. Uh and then that's going to be his turn. Caleb, is you're up. We're running. We're running. Dashing. We're dashing. Wait. Shit, I lost count. Ten, ten squares. Ten foot squares, right? Uh, whatever the measurement is right now. 15, yeah, ten feet. Fifteen feet for each square. Oh, God. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Let me remeasure oh. it then. Until you get within fifteen feet of an enemy... All squares are the size that they're marked. When you're within 15 feet, every square is five foot. All right, dashing. I'm starting to get closer to combat, but not quite there yet. That'll okay. be my turn. Parath, uh, you're hiding. Uh, you get a feeling that this manticore is tracking you. I didn't last nearly as long as I was hoping it was going to. <laughs> Okay. Exactly. He doesn't know um, your right. location, but you are still hidden from him. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get my short swords out and when he comes right up to me, I'm going to stab him in the eyes. Okay. So I'm, I'm readying that action. Ready in an action for him to get there. Got it. Uh, Manticore number one, uh, he is going to lift off, uh, kind of jump into the air and take off flying here, uh, getting about here, uh, getting right up close and personal to Acarius, uh, and just like the other one before, is going to whip its tail around and fire three tail spikes in the direction of Acarius. 18, 24, and 16. And the first two will hit. All right. Uh, dealing a total of 13 piercing damage as, again, two more spikes jab into your back as you're uh, turned away attempting to run. Uh, one to the north. Same thing is going to happen. He is going to begin to move forward as well, taking off, uh, flying into the air. Uh, kind of overlooks the scene, remembering that there were two of you uh, and only seeing Icarius is again going to turn his attention towards you again. Uh, 20, 11, and 21. Alrighty. 9 and 4. Big oof. <laughs> Run. But, <laughs> Run. <laughs> with that being said, uh, it is your turn. So you'll get... And we're running. 
So we'll end my turn right there. Just want to point out that Heidegg has been doing wonders. Yep. So from this square on is the full measurement, just as a reminder. Yeah, I'm I'm beneath it. I dashed. Oh, okay. Yep. 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 I understand what you're doing now. You're like, no, fuck this shit. I'm going. Uh, Evendor. Evendor. I'm going to dismiss light. You're going to dismiss light from yourself? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, nope, I'm just going to be blind. It's okay. I don't mind. Being blind is better than being dead. Okay. He's gone! Where did Evander go? Oh no. He just blinked Anything out of else? existence. Evendor, anything else? No, doing that was a full act. Oh god. I don't know Wait, why, but it does. It is. To dismiss it's a full act. Dismiss. Dismiss light. Oh, it's not concentration, is it? No, no it's, it's not. not. It's, it's oh. just you cast it, and oh wow. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. You basically okay. have to recast it. Uh huh. All right, Alakul, you're up. Um, I'm running up next to Kalidus, making my way up there and not doing a whole heck of a lot else. Alrighty. Hopper? Uh, everybody's falling back. Are we just taking a defensive position here? Feel bad. I think we're just regrouping. Okay. Well, I've got light on me, so I'm gonna... So that's 15, 30... 45. I'll make myself a target so Carius can get out. I'm good okay. here. Alright. Uh, this one. Let's see if he uh, is still tracking. Oof. Oof. He uh, begins wandering around staying on the ground itself. Uh, kind of looking around. His head turns over in your direction, Parath. Uh, and you think for a second that maybe he's on to your scent once again. Uh, but a couple moments pass, he looks over, and then he looks back over towards the party and appears that he can't find you right now. Caleb is. Um, seeing that Acarius is hurt, I'm going to move up. 20, wait, sorry. Let me do the measurement tool here. Two, two squares is 30 feet. Okay. I'm going to use my free action to grumble under my breath at Kalidus. I'm not going to be his bait anymore. <laughs> I'm not doing great... this ever again. You did a great job, Acarius. And as I'm saying that, I will uh, healing light him for 5d6. All right. All one. That's so that is healing. Yeah, 25 points of healing. Uh, and then for my uh, action, I think I can just barely see man over there. See yeah, the line. Mm -hmm. uh, God, do I have any other spells with that far of a range? No, uh, I don't. Probably not. Wait, what's this range on that? Ooh, it is. Hmm. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at this man. Okay. And that will be at fourth level. 23 to hit. 23 is going to hit. Uh, for 27 oh. points of damage. And he is lit up like a Christmas tree. Okay. Uh, one second. I'm going, I think I want to try to use auras to dictate when you guys are inside and outside of the 15 foot range. Hold on. So, gotcha. 20, 30. That's my other spell slot. <clears throat> no, that's half, right? Yeah. 
Well, I guess that's right. Oh, right, I gotta add one more time. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do that real quick on all these and then I'll do the damage and then we'll do the light. Yeah, he's not brightly lit. He's just got this dim light glittering on him, okay. but uh, next attack will have advantage. All right. Oh, I, yeah, I'm not gonna. Oh, it's fine. Just a second. Uh, so yeah, it's got a dim light around it. There you go. Neat. Uh, Parath, you're up. All right. I'm going to put my swords away, get my bow out, and I'm going to shoot this guy after casting Hunter's Mark on him. Okay. So bonus action, Hunter's Mark. Indeed. Uh, 21 and 20. Okay. Uh, both will hit. And I gotta do the damage on the other attack once I... And then just give me the total whenever you're finished. Okay. 3T1. All right. Uh, you notice as you uh, let loose the two arrows in the direction of the manticore, uh, it takes a big hit, kind of stumbles a little bit, uh, catching it off guard as it had lost your, uh, your scent and was unable to track you. Uh, that is, that does pull you out of stealth. Is that right? Yes. All right. And with that, anything else? Nope. Okay. I had pretty sure I had to use my move to get my weapons shuffled around. All right. Uh, still in there the air. Is. Still in the air, flying in your direction, comes crashing down onto the ground, uh, is going to make uh, three attacks, once with a bite and twice with its claws. Ooh, Griffale. Uh, 13, uh, 6, and 22. That 22 will hit. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay. Uh, so dealing five slashing as its very massive claw comes swiping in your direction. Uh, but with that, uh, he's bringing a friend with him uh, who's also going to join in battle here. Uh, as he does, uh, he's going to do the same thing, crash into the ground uh, and make his attacks as well. Uh, one sec. Uh, yikes. Uh, 13, 25, and 24. Uh, 24. As advantage? Mm-hmm. Probably pack tactics. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, the crit and the 24 are definitely going to hit. Okay. Uh, so the crit is going to do... Oh, that's a... What's the damage? 22 a total. Six. Yeah, so... There you go. No, it's more than 22. It would be 24. <laughs> no, it be a six instead of a d6 roll for the crit. Oh, right. Because we do max damage. Right, oh, right, right. All right, so two extra damage. So two extra damage. 24. Yeah, 24. Ow! Acarius, uh, reach back. Uh, Kaelid is uh, attempting to help pulling out one of the spikes uh, from your back. It hurt like son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, Hopper's right in front of me, so... 
for Hopper. All right, so Hopper is much appreciated because I am about to jump into all of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely nobody else could have used that. Nope, nobody. Mm-mm. Well, that would He's require him to get up there for you. <laughs> He's fine. All right, anything else? Um, yeah, I'm going to just move uh, kind of over here to get a range position and pull. I'm going to my turn there. All righty. Evandor, you're still up by the, the podium here. Give me a perception check. Okay. I don't like the way you say that. There's one behind you. Is it barbarian? Oh, yeah, you, that tribal betrays us. I'm dead. <laughs> Everything's fine. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna move up. Hey, Ark. Yeah. Everything's not fine. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> I just want you to know that. Don't be lulled into it. This is fine. Even though the this house is, is burning. Everything is fine. I double move. <laughs> okay. I'm in danger. All right. Hello, I'm cool. in danger. Okay. Let's see. How far does this get me? Get up next to Hopper. Okay, fine. Dash and... Um... I'm going to cast that on myself. Okay. So you're going Let's party and shield the faith. Just I don't like getting hit, together. man. It's apparently the spell, so... Yeah, uh, I'm right, it is. Actually, I think I'm going to do this a little differently uh, because Acarius cast it on Hopper. Uh, I'm going to put this shield on Acarius so I can know who is doing the concentration on him. Yeah, that's fine. I'll... I know. What I mean, my you've AC already is. yeah, you've already factored in the number anyway, so I figured it's actually easier for me because I'll remember who cast what spell. Yeah, because you need to keep track of the concentration mm-hmm. more than anything. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, anything else, Alcool? Cool? Uh, that's it. All right, Hopper, you're up. All righty. So uh, she's gonna look to Alcool cool and be like, "Get the one on the right." And she's going to move. Oh. That's 15. This being right here technically jumps into the normal movement, yep. right? It's a normal movement. Yep. Okay. So 15. That makes 20. Uh, which one's more hurt, Parrath? The left or the top? The no, one on the right is the only one that we've been hitting. The only one on the right? Okay. Well, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to attack this guy. And I'm going to lead with two attacks. Uh, uh, 23 23 hits. probably hits. Yep, yep. All right, and I'm going to use a superiority dice okay. for a maneuvering attack. So, Parath, kindly get the fuck out of there. Move up to half its move. Okay, so... And you don't provoke getting yeah, out of there. Get yeah, just there. on the edge of, yeah. And thankfully, the other one's in my reach if he tries to move at you. I'm mm-hmm. not worried about them moving at me because they can tail spike. Mm-hmm. That's also true, but don't give the DM ideas. <laughs> he knows! <laughs> As if I didn't tail- already know. He's been tail <laughs> Don't, re- don't remind time. him! <laughs> you don't remind him! <laughs> Alright, uh, but that's 16 on, on the one I hit there. Uh, okay. Uh, the one to the north? Yeah. Uh, one sec. It was... 15, Mind of these things probably have 20, two, like, three things they can do. Five, three. Yeah, okay. I thought I might have had more movement to scoop to the left, but that would have been everything. I'm done. I mean, to be okay. fair, as you have, like, one thing you can do. That's not true. I can shoot or stab. <laughs> so that's at least two. Yeah, okay. she, and she has, she has spells... Yeah, and I have spells. Healing spells. Uh, Not that anybody ever gives me credit for it. Uh, Welcome to Tick's world. Seeing seeing, uh, another person in the the fight here up close. Uh, This one's going to rush over, and much as it did with Parrot and 
uh, or much as they did with Parath, is going to bite and claw twice. Uh, 20, 14, and 23. 23 will hit. All right, dealing nine. It's slashes. a 23, 23 kind of day. 23, 23 kind of day. <laughs> Uh, as it goes to bite down and you quickly uh, use your weapon to, to kind of knock it back a little bit. Uh, it makes its uh, claw attack a little off kilter, uh, but then immediately as it braces and gets its position back, it immediately swipes back with the second attack uh, and is able to catch you across the back, uh, dealing nine slashing. Kalidus. All right, I'm going to use my action to... Use my Rod of the Pack Keeper, suck some power out of it, get a spell slot back. Okay. And then I will move forward my two spaces. Okay. Right over here. And uh, I'll bonus action uh, 2d6 healing onto Parath. Okay. Whopping Ouch. five. Five is five. Five, five is better than turn. zero. All right, Parath. Uh, got a little bit of healing cast upon you. Uh, Manticore look hungry, though. They do. But this one, this one's hurt. So I'm going to try to drill an arrow into it. Maybe two. We'll see how it goes. Uh, hunter's mark. Boom. Boom. Four. Twenty total. Uh, as you do, it did. Uh, as you draw the uh, the bow back and release it, you catch this thing right in the center of the the skull, uh, and you watch as it kind of waves a little bit in the air and then collapses on the ground. Uh, it is now dead. All right, I'm gonna use my second attack on this one because I think that's one that Hopper hit. That is. And I'm going to use my bonus to move a Hunter's Mark onto that one. Okay. And then second attack. 13. Does not hit. All right. And then I'm going to Zoidberg out of here. Over to the right. So it has to go through me. Get behind me. And then... I can't get behind you. Close enough. Alright. Uh, and I'm done. Okay. I was told to make the Zoidberg sound. Blame somebody else. Uh, as you turn and run away from uh, the one on the far left, as instructed by Hopper, uh, it flings its tail, uh, throwing three spikes in your direction. 14, 17, and 18. On me? Uh, On you, Parrot. Oh. Uh, last two are going to get me. Last two <sighs> wouldn't have got me if somebody put a I'm, shield of uh, faith on me. I'm triggering Sentinel on that one since it's making an attack. Okay. Nope. Bad. Nope. All right. D100. Called it. Very bad. <laughs> very bad. Very, very bad. No, don't do that. Where are. Where is that tape? I gotta look through my list of stuff that I have in here. Did I have that? Did, did that Manticore roll a D100 when it got a 1? Oh, no, you had advantage. Never mind. That was an 11. Uh, Never mind. There's the phone. All right, uh, give me a D100. Oh, Ooh. no, oh, I know what that no. is. Weapon attack. Uh, oh, no. Is that the full one, or is it just the regular? All right, give me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, it's a different one. Okay. Hey, I'm good at those. All right. Uh, so... Uh, as you were uh, going to try to strike over at the Manticore, it is just outside of your reach as it kind of maneuvers back and flings its tail towards uh, towards Parrot to send these spikes going. As it does, as you're reaching, you start to lose your footing and you fall to the ground. 
Oh, what the hell. Uh, you take four bludgeoning damage as you succeed but still hit the ground, uh, banging your head on it as you lose your footing. Uh, you are still prone but only take half damage. Bonk. Bonk. And then I get speared <clears throat> by spines. Uh, I tried to help. For 20 damage! <laughs> oh god, I was away for two seconds. What happened? Uh, Hopper crit that failed thing. and then fell and bonked her head, but fortunately saved on the saving throw. Uh, and took Ooh, half damage. You rolled a 95. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the one you don't it's want. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You it's always guaranteed damage no matter what. Yeah, we we watched one of our friends roll that and uh, not make the save. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ridiculed the crap out of. Yep. There's, There's a hilarious. couple of you that did that actually. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the manicor standing directly in front of Hopper now sees a very delicious dish laying on the ground and begins laying into her. Uh -huh. Twenty-one, uh, yeah. thirteen, and twenty-two. The two will hit. Uh, the right. 21, 21 and, 22. and the 22. All right. Uh, dealing 15 piercing, or 8 piercing and 7 slashing. Ow, 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 uh, Acarius uh, backed away a little bit, feeling a little more rejuvenated. What would you like to do? Um, I'm protecting you all. <laughs> we're going to step up here and hit this guy with Toll the Dead. I don't feel very protected. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, that is a wisdom save. Wisdom saving throw. Yeah. yeah. It's pass or fail DC thirteen. All right, All right that yeah. passes. All righty. So uh, it begins to hear the the bells toll, but maybe it's just too unintelligent uh, to understand what that actually means for it, and uh, continues to shrug it off. Anything else? Um. I'll actually move a little bit and in my turn. Alright. Evandor, you're up. Okay. Yeah, no, that spell won't work. <laughs> yes, you're at full distance right now, so. I know, so, and I was trying to see if Agonaz or Scorcher would work, but nope, that's 30 30. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll cast a fireball right there. Right there? Uh, what is right the radius there. on it? Is it. Here. 20 feet radius? I believe so. Okay, so it'll just, it should just hit those two. Uh, it, well, so that's. I'm gonna say you wanna put it in the back. Uh, Why? Because up close, every square is five foot. Okay. I also so. have the. Mold spell or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Do that. That makes it easier. We don't have to account for somebody being there. Exactly. 26. 26 damage and a dex save from both of them. And the fire sculpts are oh on top. Oh my god. Fuck wow. off. Flap. 13 fire isn't bad. One of them was like, I ain't deal with this shit. I have to make a save too? No, no. he has mold spell. No, he, yeah, he has sculpt spell. So I just take half? No, you take nothing. You take nothing. He Ooh. he formed the spell around you, so it does nothing to you. It's a sculpt spell ability. Alright, anything else? Evandor? Nope. Okay. Unless oh, something's cool. gonna stab me from behind. Not yet. Nope. Do that on you. Alright. 
So. Hey, Alicor. What? His tail's really hurt. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to go take care of that for you. 15. 20. 25? Right? Correct. Okay. I bet I can make um, really good arrows with them. Yeah, you have several stuck in you. I think you can uh, use those. I am going to take. Sick burn. I save from the ground. A uh, <laughs> a couple swipes at this guy. Alrighty. Twenty-three. Twenty-three hits. Twelve and another thirteen. Alrighty. Anything else? Another attack. Okay. 24. Hits. 7. One sec. Okay. Uh, an additional 7. Yeah. Alright. Anything else? F it. Alright. Uh, so making a couple of quick Back. swipes. Another 19. Gonna define fight both of them. Okay. Anything else? Nope, that's it. That's okay. all I can do. <laughs> then another divine smite on top of that. Oh, I'm wait, put hold another on. One. Hold on. No, I'm do kidding. This one. I'm kidding. I, uh, I'm done. Yeah, doing a couple of big hefty swipes with this uh, long sword of yours. Uh, both of them landing pretty solid. Uh, and as you land, uh, sinking uh, some of your divine energy into it uh, and then pulling back and unleashing again uh, and as you hit uh, both of them dealing good amounts of damage but it is still standing Hopper you're on the ground prone I meant to do that get up and I'm just gonna keep attacking this one okay Of course it's on the other side. Of course it is. It always is. How about the 25, though? 25 does hit. So I'll poke him for 9 after standing up. Alrighty. Anything else? Yeah, I'm going to action surge. Alright, let me do another round of attacks here. Okay. How about a 17? 17 hits. Still standing? I don't know. You need damage. Uh, it's 13. 13. Still standing. It was. It oh. hadn't come through yet for me. Okay, gotcha. All right, so then the last attack. Another 22, 22 also hits. That'll be 10. Is that one still standing? Still standing. Does it look really, really hurt? Or uh, just kind of... As you look at the two beside you, both of them look pretty rough. Um, Several I'm gashes gonna... across some things of that nature. Gotcha. I'm going to go ahead and spin the superiority strike, or dice then, and I'm going to put out uh, distracting strike. Okay. So that if it just happens to survive, the next person's attack will have advantage. Uh, so another seven for the superiority dice damage. To the one to the north? Yeah, to the one I've been hitting. Uh, as you do... Yeah, that's legs fine. crumble out from <laughs> under it and it collapses to the ground. Yeah, I figured it would either die or I'd give somebody advantage and they'd kill <laughs> right. it. Right. And I'm just All gonna right. scoot over. Okay. I'm done. Uh, okay, let us. One left. Alright. Grim determination. Warlock will say the line. Two elders blasted the last one. Alright. Oh, well. Oh, no. Oof. Oof. 100 first. Uh -oh. How determined are were you? I'm just curious. Un just, uncertain. Just that's that's of, what it was. Just kind of determined. I heard uh, grim determined, which means you're usually pretty serious at that point. Well, just grimly um, determined. Oh, okay. Uh, as you uh, cast this spell uh, over in the direction of the manticore, uh, the manticore dodges underneath of it, and as it does. It actually gets an opportunity attack against Hopper. 
for being so close by. Uh, 13 hmm. to hit. And that will not hit. Okay. And I'm going to use a superiority die to repost. Alrighty. There it is. Yep. There it is. Uh, go All ahead part and, of the plan. Go ahead and give me some damage. And tell me how you finished off the third manticore out of this pack of them. So it it tried to bite me, huh? Uh-huh. So as it lunges in for the bite, I'm going to tie in something real cool here. She's going to uh, use uh, Blessing of the Raven Queen to kind of like bamf back just enough so that like she's like a couple feet back but the glaive is where it was lunging to bite and instead it just gets a mouthful of pointy end and dies so it bites down on top of the glaive taking the damage inside of the the, the mouth of this thing as it chomps down uh, and just collapses at the end of the glaive actually kind of yanking the glaive from your hand a little bit as it collapses uh, but uh as the last manticore falls, Evendor, give me a perception check. Fucking tribal man, it's gonna get you. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm in danger. Uh, your perception doesn't show you that. The barbarian that was with you has been walking behind you this entire time, just watching, curious to see how you're going to handle it. Uh, doesn't actually attempt to do anything negative or evil towards you, just curious is all. And I'm still unaware of his existence. Mm -hmm. You don't even notice he's back there. I'm sure if the others turned around and looked, they'd probably see him, but you were so focused on the manticore in front of you that you didn't actually get to fight uh, that it distracted you from him even being there. Well, now that that's taken care of, we can go back to the matter at hand. Darius grumbles something under his breath about bait. Yes, you made very good bait, Acarius. I'm gonna pull, while he walks by me, I'm gonna pull the two manticore spines out of him. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make arrows out of these. I think you need to start uh, getting the ones out of you, Parrot. Eh. You You're walking by. Well, yeah, but he's leaving, so I would have to follow him to get his. <laughs> mine are staying put. I can get those any time. <laughs> These are mine now, because they're part of me. <laughs> I have spikes now. It's pretty cool. I'm just going to start driving more into me. I'll just be a spiky dragonborn. <laughs> I'm not real sure how good that would be for your health. Eh. He watches. I'm gonna. Uh, it doesn't kill you. Makes you stronger. Barbarian again begins to back away, just watching you guys. Uh, you get a feeling that there's been almost an uneasy peace between these barbarians and the Manticore. While he wouldn't fight or help you guys defend yourselves, he wasn't going to jump in and stop you from throwing your lives away potentially at fighting these things I'm going to skin them I'm going to get all the spikes and then anything else that looks cool I'm going to cake too um, I'm going to look over at the barbarian uh, as I walk back up kind of looking around making sure everybody's still alive everybody's alive they'll live really? uh, kind of look over to Tim be like um was that fine? Were those creatures dangerous to you? Uh, he nods at you uh, in kind of an unassured manner. He's, uh, you could tell it, it was a bit uneasy. Like, he would have helped had their situation with 
the manticore been different um, he just kind of just yeah it's fine that kind of mannerisms just kind of brushing it off a bit okay and with that on nod say very well we still would like to dig beside the altar are you going to have any issues with that Again, he looks at you. No hurt, Alter. That all? Not very well. We will not harm your altar. Go back up top. Okay. We probably shouldn't lie to him, right, Pareth? I'm in a large amount of pain. I, I, yeah, me too, but. The Raven Queen says pain is just weakness leaving the body. <laughs> uh, as I get back up here, I'll kind of look over at Evander and say, Right here, right? Was it right there? <laughs> yeah, it was at your feet right there. Yes. Alright. Uh, the super buff and very strong... Wait, what's the floor made out of? Lava. The, the ground itself mm -hmm. uh, where you're walking is kind of uh, just a, a very soft just dirt uh, path uh, as you're kind of feeling around and you move up a little closer to the altar it looks a little uh, uh, nicer because most people don't kind of trample on the grass or anything like that there's a, a small layer of kind of frozen grass uh, and then the ground underneath of it appears to be a little firmer than what you're standing on. So the ground here is more firm? Yeah, it, and you can kind of see like the outline around you where it goes from like the, the brown to green. The green section is where nobody really walks on and it's got like a, because of how cold it is here, it's got a very firm ground underneath of it. The dirt underneath of it is kind of frozen where the top layer of the, the ground where you're standing at in the area that you guys approached from, uh, all of that's kind of worn down a little bit and uh, isn't quite as uh, icy as the, the surface of the other areas. Okay. Um... So yeah, I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to kind of lean down next to the altar and start pulling dirt away very slowly at first. And I'm going to glance over my shoulder and see how the barbarian's reacting as I start digging away. Not touching the altar, kind of keep the dirt away from it and such. Mm -hmm. Just start digging there. Okay. Uh, as you do, uh, kind of taking glances back at him, uh, he's kind of you know, doing the whole lifting up on his, on the ball of his foot and looking forward, just kind of watching, uh, taking no offense to what you were doing. Okay. Uh, so as I start to, I'll start digging a little bit more, uh, heavily and kind of look over at Evander. Uh, are you able to press the digitate the dirt away that may disturb the altar? Sure, sure. And I'll just keep on digging. Okay. Uh, how far are you trying to dig down? How far was it, Evander? 30 feet? Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> You're supposed Such to know a these terrible things. wizard. <laughs> wizard God, ever. I literally saw it. I don't see any of you doing better. Uh, you see you me try. doing every better every other Sunday. <laughs> Damn. Oof. Well, first of all, I was speaking in character. Oh, uh, well. Well, then then hold on. <laughs> Hopper, Hopper will say, are you nerds done yet? Just, uh, I'm going to start digging until I find something. Are we all really right. making a carious dig? Or not a carious? Well, Kayla. we Kayla. should be making a carious dig, but why are we making Kayla a zig? Because... I'm helping you skin three manticores, so uh, priorities. Sure. As you begin digging underneath here, uh, taking a lot of kind of very patient uh, 
swipes, I imagine, kind of using whatever weapons you can to kind of dig away at the Just this kind dagger. of frozen <laughs> yeah, this kind of frozen ground underneath of you. As you're digging away from it and making sure to stay very far, uh, a good meter, like uh, a few inches at least, away from the altar itself, you're digging through and you're not finding much. And then as you're going through, you finally hit something solid, solid beyond the small like rocks that you've been hitting along the way. As you make impact with it, you kind of reach down and brush away the dirt off of it and get a closer look at it. And it's ivory. But it's not in the location that Evendor mentioned. Hmm. The way Evendor is describing it is it was really far down. You've maybe got three feet down and you hit something already. Evendor, is this what you were looking for? It doesn't seem like I've dug enough. Evander, did you fall asleep? Sorry. Can I, I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> uh, what you said, ivory. So is it, am I seeing like a box? Is it bone? Is it a tusk? Uh, based on so you're only seeing maybe a couple inches of it because of the surface area that it's covering. Uh, as you kind of dig around, uh, you're able to kind of feel around to the edge of it uh, and dig out a little bit of dirt off of the edge, and you're able to tell that it kind of wraps underneath. Uh, but whatever it is, like you're seeing... So imagine if you're kind of looking down from where you're at. You're seeing something that goes from like where your location is and goes down forward into the ground. So it kind of curves down into the ground a bit. So something going... like what you would think a, a like a rounded tusk if it was li like you're looking on the back edge of it as it's rounding forward. So is it rounding off like this or the other way? Uh, so from what you're seeing, let me see if I can freehand this. So from what you're seeing, you're seeing something like this corner and you're seeing the edge to the south as you reach mm -hmm. forward, that's where it goes back off into the dirt. Uh, and its highest point is up closer to you, where you're standing at. Alright. Um... Oh yeah, it is 845. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I dig around it, just trying to figure out what I'm finding here? Okay. Uh, you dig back like closer towards you then like trying to uh, yeah. clear out what's back you know back in your direction uh, yeah still digging you know once again if it's going towards the altar i don't want to dig that way but right. if it's going towards me yeah and as you continue to dig further back towards you you begin to notice that it continues and it makes a shape like this and it continues off into the dirt going to your west Like dirt's kind of piled up around that side of it. That's what you've revealed so far. Does anyone have a shovel? This is getting somewhat tiring. No. Hmm. It would be would helpful Mage if someone had old earth. <laughs> it, would Mage Hand be any benefit here? I don't know if Mage Hand would work or not. What? It can Let's do, do this. To... Let's do this. Let's go to break. Uh, we can discuss the effects of Mage Hand and try to decide if you would be able to use it for this situation. Alrighty. All right. Do you think you could use a 10-foot pole? You could, <laughs> but it's just a 10-foot pole, though. It doesn't have any digging properties to it. Poke the ground furiously. Hmm. Alright, so let's do that. Ten, uh, do a 5-minute break. All right, guys, uh, so we're going to take our five-minute break. When we come back, they're going to continue to dig around, uh, figure out what this uh, ivory thing is in front of them. Uh, they believe it's probably a tusk of some sort. Uh, 
Seems to be pretty large in nature, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, but we'll take a five-minute break. When we get back, uh, we'll continue and see what they uncover here. Um, so, yeah, don't go anywhere, guys. Right. So, everybody here. 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 Red's the only one we're still missing. I think. Seems like it. Okay. Uh, so, Kayla, just as you're looking down over this, uh, you're able to run your hand over it. You feel uh, very, as you're digging and kind of uh, placing your hand over this ivory uh, bit that's sticking out of the ground, you do notice that it's kind of curved, uh, leading you to believe that it's uh, rounded off at this end. Uh, going down into the dirt, off at the distance, uh, directly in front of you and closest to the altar there. Uh, but then it does trail off or continues beyond the dirt that you've dug at uh, off to your right. Uh, you have a feeling it's going to take a lot of work to get this thing out of here, especially if you're going to do so by yourself. Well... I'm curious, what about the rest of you? Take it up, go nerds, ahead. let's go! Yeah? I will, uh, wander back over there. And, uh, provide my assistance in digging. Okay. I can help dig. Somebody have a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> welcome back! <laughs> Anyone have a shovel? In oh, I have a shovel. Never mind. I'll get my shovel out and help dig. Oh my god! Take inspiration. Someone has a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Well, Welcome back, Rez. Someone has a shovel. Yay! Um, for the sake of expediency with this, you take out the shovel and begin to dig. Uh, Evandor, move your character back just a little bit. And I'm going to kind of warn, saying, if it goes towards the altar, let's not dig that way. We promise not to harm it. As you dig uh, from the point closest to where Acarius is, is the, the highest up uh, towards the ground that this, uh, this ivory piece actually sits. Over towards Evendor, as you continue to dig, you dig further and further and further, and it slopes downward into the ground going well beyond the couple of feet that you guys were digging at whenever you first started going down almost six or seven feet in the ground noticing the side finally flattens off and you lose track of this ivory piece uh, going as you're following it around you do notice that it's kind of tapering off though giving you the impression this is probably a tusk but based on how it's kind of positioned in here it looks as if the pointed end is down in the ground and you're catching the big wide end of the tusk itself. Uh, as you're digging, uh, Evendor, the, the others are digging around the outside edges of it and around the, the bigger section, uh, closer to where they're at, you're noticing that glimmer that you were seeing is actually just a gem that was kind of looks like it was implanted into this uh this tusk but as it did you see a large crack that comes down most of the larger side of this tusk uh from the very the far end all the way through where this gem was mounted through uh and then continues on a little bit into like almost like a hairline kind of fracture towards the bottom edge of where the tusk is as you look I'm at this, guessing it's not a simple job of just plucking it out. Yeah, no. I mean, it looks like it was jammed in there with quite a bit of force that made it actually stay. Uh, you can see like the uh, the the metal casing that they used around the gym to actually hold it there uh, is what actually split it with these giant spikes that kind of pierce through it. Uh, as you're looking at this tusk you get a pretty good impression that this thing is heavy. Uh, Carius, as you're digging around your side, 
you're noticing it's not hollow for probably a good foot and a half until you reach a hollow center and then all the way around it is this foot and a half barrier that kind of surrounds it. Uh, taking a quick guess as you're looking over this, you're guessing this probably weighs close to about 300 pounds. Oh, this looks heavy, y'all. I could probably move it with help. I can make it slightly lighter. You could also yeah. let me lift crazy amounts. Was the gem still embedded, or had it come out of the tusk? It's, uh, it's still embedded. It's still sticking okay. there. The The metal clasp that they were using to mount it in with the spikes uh, are still holding it in place. Uh it looks based on like once you start to hollow out or pull the dirt out of the hollow end of this and you get a closer look on the back side of it uh it looks like it's pretty well secured in there despite the fact that the thing looks cracked down the the center of it well i can help a bit to lift it but i'll admit i'm not that strong Uh, as all of this is going on, uh, let's see, uh, Hopper and Parath, are you guys up there scavenging stuff? Yep. Yeah, we were tearing up those three manticores. Both of you give me nature checks. Maybe survival. Yeah, do survival. Uh yeah, I'm better at survival. I'll take that one. Hey! That's a plus two instead of minus two. <laughs> uh, Hopper, as you're kind of looking at this, you're kind of scratching your head like, yeah, not really sure how to approach this. And then Parrot looks and is like, no, 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 this is what we'll do. Uh, and kind of looks and begins to grab onto the tail spike uh, and pulls one of them out. Uh, successfully dislodging it. Uh, give me a uh, give me a d10 roll, Parath. Okay. Uh, as you're kind of fumbling around with these, you would be able to take at least uh, off the one to the north you could take six, uh, six spikes off of it. The one to the west, you would only get two spikes, and the one to the east, you would also only get two spikes. Um, the pelts themselves, you could start to pull some of it back uh, because these are, it looks like lion skin almost, and the pelts on them look really unique as you begin to cut and carve around you're able to get one of them without running into any snags but the other two you kind of assume if you're going to pull them off because of all the slashes that occurred and things of that nature to them you're probably going to only be able to use them for miscellaneous things so you'll get one full pelt uh the pelt does weigh 15 pounds uh and you'll be able to get a total of 10 spikes, uh, six from the one to the north and two from the west and east. Hey, good job. We managed to butcher it without butchering it. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, the rest of you, as you're back on this podium, uh, you can attempt to pull it out of there. Evandor seems to think that he can get it uh, a little easier for you to manage, possibly. Yeah, if it looks <clears throat> uncovered enough, like we can see like the bottom of it where 
Like you like get handholds underneath it. Uh, uh, you can you can see enough to where you can see the entire circumference of the horn itself, like the the. I actual think that horn. would also do it. Yeah, uh, and large reduce will shrink it down. Uh, shrinks it to half of its size and half of its weight. Is that correct? One eighth of its weight. One eighth of its weight. Okay. Yeah. So if it's 300 pounds, then that's what's 30 pounds or so. Size is halved and weight is reduced to one eighth. Okay. So one eighth of 300 is. So that's. Half. 75 is a quarter, so 45? 42, 43, 40, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so it'll be, about, it'll be about 40 pounds and shrinks it down to half of its size. Uh, you guys will be able to easily reach down, pull it out, and lay it onto uh, the ground in front of you. Uh, and then kind of backing away, expecting this thing to expand once again, uh, now that it's uh, back out. Uh, so then, let me do this, because they didn't give me a drawing of it. So this tusk was the magic thing I found in the gym. So you find basically this horn-shaped uh, tusk with a jewel in it and it's the jewel that you were seeing was radiating magic uh, and it split along that edge the tusk is split right yeah the tusk okay. is split right down the center where the stone was kind of mounted into it Alec can you get that gem out Uh, I could try. You uh, can certainly try. Before you do that, uh, Kayla does an Evendor. Give me an insight check. You said insight, right? Yep. Okay. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> uh, it makes sense that Evendor is telling Alakul to pull the stone out, but the failure of this is, as Kalidus is noticing, this is a giant relic. A jewel of that size would just be decoration to them. A giant relic would be large. It would be very large, in fact. And as you're looking this over, you get the sneaking suspicion the relic itself is this horn. It's not the gem that's protruding out of the side of it. Um, this, so this tusk hollowed out to be a giant horn. Yep, is so if, looks, okay. if you went to... Okay, so it's not just a giant tusk. Correct. If you went okay. to the edge over closer towards Evendor, you can see that the opening is actually carved in and kind of smooth all the way through uh, to allow it to be oh, okay. almost like a war horn of such. Uh, yeah, so, okay. that makes you know. a lot more sense. I was, yep. for some reason, thinking it was just a giant tusk with a ship. Right. And yeah. that and would not make any sense. With my insight, I'll kind of point out um, everything we've found has been large i doubt it's just the gym we're gonna have to lug this thing back out of here i think okay uh evandor you are getting such a faint amount of magic off of it it's almost as if there's no magic left you just sense that there are traces of it there it doesn't, it's not something you can easily identify. So basically it's a piece of shit. Yeah, like it's been, something has happened to this relic that's caused it to no longer have any magical properties to it. It's just the remnants of the magic that was within it. You there, can you help us get this back to our 
airship. He looks at you and says, Fill hole. We'll talk after. Okay, let us fill the hole. Wow. <laughs> Turn around and look at Evander. Carius is going to toss the shovel down so it's no longer in his inventory. <laughs> and walk over here. You should push Evander in the hole and say, All right, just did. Just shake my head, walk over, pick up the shovel, start shoveling dirt back into the hole. I will step over and start pushing dirt into the hole. And all of the evil characters are showing their true sides. Well, except for Alakul. Wow. Wow. I'm getting resources for the party. <laughs> yeah, we're we're over here chopping stuff. We're not causing trouble at all. Uh, Never so... an easel evil. He's just a lazy asshole. <laughs> That's true. That's also true. Uh, so you fill in the hole. It takes a little while, uh, but you're able to fill in the hole. Uh, the uh, barbarian looks at you. Uh, looks over at. Uh, the altar, which has been untouched, uh, and then looks over at the this giant uh, ivory horn, uh, and kind of looks over at Kalidus and nods like he'll help. Uh, all of you know it's pretty big. It's not something that like one or two of you are gonna carry. It's something that it's gonna require like all of you to carry. Wait, how heavy is it? Uh, 300? According according to this, it is close to 300 pounds, but at least five characters or five people can lift this item uh, if they work together and carry it back to the ship. All right, let's do it. So by five people, you just mean Hopper and Ella Cool because they're both jocks machina? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can try. Pretty much. And honestly, I could just drag it. Let's do. Let's myself. do the. Let's do the team building exercise. I, I like. I'll, team building I'll exercise. carry it with you. Okay. I'll help. Okay. Yeah, let's let's get this let's get this bad boy back up. There. So we got uh, four of you and the barbarian, correct? Sure. Let's put him to work. Like true sure. colonials that we are. Everybody, give me an athletics check, please. I am not helping. I know you're not helping. <laughs> we are aware, wizard. <laughs> Nerd. Okay. Can we take advantage from the power of friendship? Nope. Dang. In fact, you would probably get disadvantage, but... You're welcome. Go, Arcarius! Hey. Uh, I, get it. Along, I get along just fine with Alec and Parrot. Um, and probably... Uh, Arcarius, that's the name. Thank you. Arcarius. Arcarius. Uh, as you guys begin to lift this, you're noticing it's actually really hard to lift this thing uh, thankfully Alakul and Acarius are doing quite a lot of the heavy lifting uh, you're able to transport this back over uh, to the opening in the ceiling uh, where the rope hangs down uh, but now you're stuck with a new dilemma how do you get it from a cave into the airship Uh, uh, well, let's get it back to the center of the cave first, and then we'll fix Wait, how do we get it over the walls? It's down slopes. Yeah, these yeah. are down slopes. We're just lowering them down. 
Yeah, it takes it takes a lot of very careful work to make sure you're not just destroying this thing and just letting it fall down the side. I have no spells for this. I'm looking at mine and I don't either. Presumably they have some means to haul stuff into the ship. I'm assuming it doesn't fit in the back of holding. Uh, not in its current form, nor would it in a shrunken form. Um, hold on. There are... I'm going to commission a frickin' chest of holding. <laughs> as long as it weighs less than that, I could drag it up the rope. Very slowly. Uh, the rope would have to be able to hold it, though, at that point. There's yeah. also that. Um, I'm not so sure on that one. Mm -hmm. So, I'll say you're able to bring it all the way over towards the rope here. Uh, Is the rope, like, walking around, do we see any other way of getting out of here? Just the rope? It looks like it's just the rope getting out of here. Can we ask the barbarian guy if there's another way? Uh, you can. Uh, as you ask him, he shakes his head and just points to the rope. Okay, I'll take it as uh, that. Yeah. Well, how big is this opening at the top? Uh, where the dotted line is. That's right. the edges of it all the way around. So you're looking at 200 feet wide, 230 <clears throat> feet wide. Need to how long is the airship? I say, could the airship fit down in here? Uh, oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Let's look. Seems like it'd be a heck of a lot easier to bring the airship to us. I feel like it was only like 60 foot long yeah, or something. I, I have a feeling uh, it was at 200 feet, though. Uh, that would be a little crazy. I yeah, it's only like uh, from tip to the tail. Yep, it's 60 feet. <clears throat> so it'll fit? Yep. All right. Evander, if you could please contact them and ask them to come down. Um, look over towards the, the Black Lion Barbarian. We're going to have our acquaintances uh, bring down our ship. Uh, don't be alarmed. He just kind of watches and nods, kind of looking up. Evandor, as you send the message up to them, uh, pretty much just telling them to land somewhere here uh, within the grove, uh, they're able to pretty much land like in this area here. Uh, they bring the ship down, landing in between the trees. Uh, nice, comfortable spot. Uh, dropping down. Uh, they see this, yet again, another massive uh, item to carry around on the ship and try to find the space <laughs> for it. Uh, they hop off the, the boat and uh, begin to help each of you uh, to, to gather it and put it on, uh, loading it back again into the storage space uh, up towards the, the front of the ship up here. Is this uh, overkill, guys? Do you think... Maybe we can leave these items off. What's that? Maybe we should, like, drop some of these items off. Yeah, how's our storage space looking with the... Pretty packed. I mean, you have a, a really large giant shield and now a very large warhorn. The thing we got last week was small, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it, like it shrunk. shrunk down into like a <laughs> six-inch ball, basically. I can make it giant, though. No, please That's... don't do it inside, because it will destroy the ship. 
uh, kind of question but hear the captain. Me out. What if we did? Uh, will the ship be able to fly still with this much weight added to it? Uh, as you uh, ask that question, uh, Delsaphine kind of looks over at you and nods a bit. Uh, she's yeah, it should be fine. You think? I don't know. We've never had this much weight on here. So adding mm. more weight would probably be a bad thing. Mm, you we, think should, we, we should we should probably call it quits with gotta catch them all. Yeah, we should probably go drop these off before we go to the. Well, desert. we can we could do the desert and then go drop the stuff off, right? Because why would we? Why would we go there? Well, what and if then we? Back? Well, because they don't know if we can fly with this much weight. I would rather be. Well, you're about to find out because you're. Yeah, gonna we're gonna to find out. out we're gonna find out one way or the other. <laughs> so if we can fly, let's just finish the desert thing and then just be done. Yeah, no. Me. So. Me. Uh. So what is the plan then? Uh, that leaves you. I need to switch here. So we've been to There's so many more blue pens. Mm -hmm. yeah, we everybody. gotta catch them all. So I'm been saying, to... let's drop all this off. <laughs> Great Worm Cavern. We went to Baron as well, and what was the third one? Uh, the One Stone, which is the one you missed last. Just week. think of like okay. the cool achievement will unlock for actually doing all of these quests. So this line seems obsessive. <laughs> oh, you know, tw 2300 it's, miles. It's Storm King's Thunder, the completionist edition. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'll chime in saying I particularly don't care if we help this dragon out or not. Ogella seemed nice enough, but didn't uh, give us a whole lot. From Harshnag? No, actually, you you were specifically told, Kalidus, by the banner that your trial rested in the desert. And the dragons. Wow. Did I? Mm-hmm. And she also told you to follow the river. I think we found us. In. What does following the river mean? We found We're us. In one stone. I'm assuming that's a river, maybe? Mm -hmm. Well, you guys found the thing that was on the river. It was ourselves. It was yourselves. You found uh, yourselves. I mean, technically true. Some of us did, at least. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I mean, we we yourself. punted we punted Grandcool into the river. I punted Grandcool into I the river. I honestly don't blame you. <laughs> he probably <laughs> deserved it. I guess I just didn't take good notes for that. I thought I did, but yeah, she mentioned the river. You weren't here on River Day. You were in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't... Okay, so I think... I think it was because of how it was presented to you. Um, it was while you were keeping watch. And you were getting almost like hallucinations. Uh -huh. And you were... Yeah, I got all that. I saw like two blue dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh... The name was Miriani, said that six trials awaited us. Mm -hmm. Would test our might, will, cunning, and savvy. Mm -hmm. And she led you towards, she said, your part of the trial. Uh, oh, the Dasaran River. Towards the Dasaran River. Uh, Fuck is that? And it reaches all the way up. Oh, it's way down there. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, the, the river that runs right through Yartar. But you guys followed a different path. Because the Desarn River also goes north as well. Uh, north-south, but 
That's fine. You guys followed a different pattern. Pattern. She didn't get it correct, uh, but you found what you were looking for and oh, so led you was... towards okay. your trial, which was when you met Felgolos. Oh, so he's my trial. All right. Well, suddenly realizing that. Yeah. Um... That. So that was the the tip off. Was she was trying to lead you towards a trial, and she that's why she was telling you to go towards the river. Uh, but when you guys gotcha. detoured back around, I had to change things out a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I was just paying attention to when we went south, because that's what I had bolded in my notes. <clears throat> to pay attention at that point. Mm-hmm. <coughs> People pay attention during D&D games. Some of us what? do. What? Some of us do. Some of us do. Evander. Cough. What's going on? Huh? What are we talking? <laughs> What's been going on? <laughs> Realizing I shoot this. the nearest bad guy. A score, right? That's yes. A score, a score, a score, a score. Yep. So yeah, realizing that that is uh, in tune with my visions. Yeah, Calidus will not say that he doesn't give a shit about Felgelos and uh, be down to head that way. We just can't find anything or bring anything heavy back with us from there. You mean? But and he also of money. he also offered you like whatever treasure you could take back with you whenever you leave a score as well. Two dragons! That's two, two dragon hordes! Two dragon hordes! Two dragon hordes, sir. Okay, maybe we should go back to the Eye of the all Father. That's what I'm saying! <laughs> <laughs> you don't go hunting dragons and then not come back with a lot Completely of loot. Completely up to you guys, whichever path you want to take. It's only an extra... how... thousand meters... <laughs> We do have a rock we can drop on one of the dragons. That's what yes. I asked. Well, actually, I, like I didn't that. say that, but I like that idea. Let's not ruin one of the relics. By it's dropping. not it's so a many, rock. though. You can't ruin it. It's made for dropping. It, it, it's a magical... This rock was made for dropping. It's a magical bomb rock. Yeah, it, we, li we discovered that it literally is a rock that giants would cloud giants would use to just drop on people. That's how the mm. Pony Island got out there. Once, <laughs> like, uh, here, we'll just throw this out our cloud and make some place where people start burying their dead around. It was just... <laughs> and then we could laugh hey, at them. That kind of looks like a horse. I bet you I can give a nice... Are you fucking stealing my joke from two weeks ago? <laughs> I'm totally stealing your joke from two weeks ago. Because <laughs> so it was stole. a great joke and Havoc wasn't here for it. Alright, well, out of character, I think. Probably lightning our load would probably be a good idea. Mm -hmm. I doubt we're going to get everything we want out of two dragons if we're able to no, survive that. No, in fact, that, I but... imagine, considering our friend said that the both dragons were stronger than he is, I would imagine that fighting the dragons would be probably stupid. But we're kind of a stupid You're party. kind of a stupid party, so... <laughs> I mean, no. I have a dragon slaying longsword. This is what alcohol lives for. I'm not... I'm saying... If we happen to end up killing two dragons, I would feel a little silly if we didn't have an airship with an empty cargo hold. Let's put it that way. So we're going to go to the Eye of the Allfather. So the plan is Bull Run is back to the Allfather. Yes, yes. Go back yeah, to the All Father might as well. For a drop I mean, off. I mean, it's not like we can't just, you know, tuck this stuff somewhere safe. And then come pick it up later. But if we want to double back and then double back, okay. Well, maybe we gotta go check in with Harshnag. Maybe he's like, Jesus, I didn't plan. I didn't bring any food. I'm literally dying in here. Well, let's I mean, let's you know. check with Harshnag then. Okay. Maybe he wants to come kill dragons. I'll hey, use my sending asking. stone. But first things first. Uh, the ship attempts to take off. Struggles considerably <laughs> at first. We're not going yeah, anywhere. We're, we're dropping this off. <laughs> and then begins to hover. At first, it's like it lifts off and then immediately is back on the ground. And then they're like, okay, we need more heat. And they go to the fire elemental that is within the cage that is helping to keep this balloon afloat. Uh, and they tell it to, to glow hotter, and as it does, it starts to lift, 
and it's just enough to be able to ascend and lift out of Boron as well. Uh, and you motion them to head back to the Eye of the Allfather, but as you do, that will be where we end tonight's session. If fire magic would help. Please don't throw a fireball into the furnace. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's how that works. Mm. It doesn't work the way you think it works. But that's how I want it. <laughs> that is typically why people become wizards, yes. So... We'll end tonight's session with uh, being able to break out of Varun as well, uh, rotating the ship and moving back in the direction of the Eye of the Allfather. Without killing any tribal people. Without killing tribals tonight. We did I, it. I had to reward it because the, the book actually said they're completely aggressive. <laughs> I that waited to see how the... you I waited to see how you guys approached it. If you guys approached it and you're just like, fuck it, we're going there and then we'll deal with the shit later, no, too late. But because you started the in the encounter with them of going up and talking to them first, I was like, all right, let's see how it goes. That's going to be the the MO of Caleb, just so y'all know, he's going to try to talk it out. He'll obviously fight. He just helped murder three manacores, like whatever. But mm -hmm. try to talk it out first. You wanted to talk it out with the manacores first? No, no. They attacked y'all. Oh, they were gonna fucking yeah, eat they were, one of They're those monstrosities. Two. Like, you don't really talk to them. No. no. no you, just set, you just set one of your friends out as bait. Yeah. Absolutely did. He didn't die. <laughs> He almost did. He didn't die. <laughs> he was coming real close. So were you. But did yes, he die? Yes, so was I. All right. But if I'm they knocked him out, they were just going to eat him. Going to end stream. Bye stream. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.